Yeah. Well, if you think about this and the symbolism of the XXX, the triple X, think about what most single men do on the computers. <laughs> I know it sounds crazy, but, you know, that's powerful energy that's being wasted there. Hmm. <laughs> this life-giving energy and, like, you know, they're symbolically buying into that triple X stuff. You know hmm. what I mean? Yeah, yeah, sure. <laughs> same, as you've got, same as you've got the triple X film with uh, Vin Diesel, in which he's seen as this heroic figure and everyone went to the cinema and powered the triple X thing. Do you yeah. know what I mean? yeah. Yeah, it's, it's, this is this shows you how endemic this thing is, and like you and know how crafty these things are. Of course, and and also I think it uh, if you convert the the alphanumerical number on a, a alphanumeric system from one yeah. to to nine, then I think X becomes uh, six. So it's basically six six six, right? Six there. six. Well, I didn't know that, but that's good. Yeah. <laughs> Right, so the next thing on, uh, moving into William yet again, with more stuff to do with him. Um, it turned out a few months ago that he'd been made the thousandth member of the Order of the Garter. Now, mm. he's actually the 999th member of the Order of the Garter, but they changed it to a thousandth because of uh, someone, you know, not being registered or something on the official log. Mm. But as you will know, the Order of the Garter is the parent organization of Freemasonry. Yeah. Right, um, so if you think about that situation we've got there, what are the chances that Prince William, if they hadn't pre-planned this, would happen to be the 1,000th member? I.e., you know, in the chronology of events, it just so happened that he was bang on the 1,000th member. And, and that's also could be interpreted as the 1,000 points of lights. So I don't know if you heard about that. I don't know about that. No, that's uh, new to me. Uh, that's but, the, yeah, okay, continue, yeah. Yeah, but do you know what I mean? It's, it's it's quite a hard coincidence to fall upon that it'd be the thousandth member in you know as as is as it happens. Of it's, course, uh, of course. But then go on further on again. Do, did you come across the Prince William received his wings uh, news all over Sky News and stuff recently? I don't mm. know if you came across. That. Basically, uh, yeah. he's uh, he's been in the RAF. He's been doing his duties, and there's all the RAF sim symbolism flying everywhere at the moment. They're trying to get everyone into the armed forces by giving everyone a bank holiday for armed forces day. You know what I mean? <laughs> just, just keep the war going, guys. Yeah. Uh, but essentially. Uh, with the RAF, he said he received his wings. And if you look at the symbolism of the RAF wings and the RAF, basically, when you don't have your wings, the RAF is the logo is the RAF in a, um, you know, a, a circle of um, I can't remember the name for it, a uh, a wreath, like a circle wreath. Okay. Yeah. So if you imagine that as the Egyptian uh, sun disc for Horus, mm -hmm, and then mm -hmm. when all of a sudden they say he's got his wings, they put these wings on the RAF sun disc, and it makes it exactly the same as the Horus sun disc with wings. There we go. Huh. So you know, he the, the fact that they're pushing around the fact that he's got his wings, yeah. it was just symbolic symbolic for him saying that you know he's ascending into this thing, whatever you want to call this thing. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? <laughs> right, right. But I mean. Huh. Here I am again saying that Prince William is, um, the, as I said, with the Dan Brown book and the Da Vinci Code and everything that goes with it. They're mm. trying to get the masses to believe that there's a lost bloodline of Jesus Christ. And there might be. Um, but what I'm saying is they're trying to get everyone to accept that. And yeah. so when Dan Brown's book, which was a terrible book written really badly, but obviously interesting story. Sure. Um, when everyone from, you know, like your 60-year-old woman who like doesn't get out much to your to your Benny Dom crew or whatever in Spain. When they were all like running around reading this book going on about it, they were all having the seed implanted in their head that there's a lost bloodline to Jesus Christ. Yeah. And um, you think about the idea of the Priory of Sion, this thing is all to do with the Sion Olympic Games. Yeah. Um it's all part of the same thing. Um but moving on, obviously the last uh, thing symbolic with the Queen as well is that it's a diamond jubilee in twenty twelve. Oh, so they're going to be, really? they're going to be, hmm. which is a, a lot of celebrations. Yeah. But um, moving on, <laughs> <laughs> moving on as yeah. always. <laughs> Olympic bid 2012, the London Olympic bid. We received it and we received confirmation on July the 6th, 2005. The International Olympic Committee has the honour of announcing that the games of the 30th Olympiad in 2012 are awarded to the city of London. Um, the day after was the 7-7 um, bombings of London, but on that particular day, everyone, the news would have us believe, was full of like positive energy that Great Britain had won the Olympic Games. I mean, I think there's probably only about 2% who were bothered about it, <laughs> but um, the media would obviously tell you that everyone was, uh, you know, going out and getting drunk about it, but yeah. essentially no. Yeah. Um, but, <laughs> 
what they didn't tell you. Um, and it's been covered up by the news, but it's on the internet, but it never got covered in News 24 or whoever, whatever you watch. Basically, on the same day that London bid was won for the Olympic Games, right, there was a huge, well, I don't know what you want to call it, massacre in the, on the island of Haiti, mm-hmm. in which 24 people confirmed dead after more than 300 heavily armed UN troops carried out a major pre-do- pre-dawn military raid in City Soleil. So they, what happened was the UN troops, which is supposed to be the peacekeeping force, not something that goes out and actually you know, does stakeout operations on drugs barons, yeah. um, they did this, dawn, this, this pre-dawn military raid in which they killed 24 innocent people. Right? And there's a lot yeah. of people looking into this. But what is symbolic is the place where it was. It was in City Soleil, which is Sun City. Huh. Right? Yeah. Gets even weirder. It's one of the poorest communities in Haiti. It's one of the poorest communities in the Northern Hemisphere. It's got endemic AIDS, you know, poverty, everything. People are starving in this place because of the way that it's, you know, you know essentially it's been crippled by the power structure. Yeah. But basically, it's one of the poorest communities, as I've said, and it's in a place called Port-au-Prince. So it's Prince, Port, Sun City. Mm. Hmm. On the same day the Olympic bid was won. Yeah. So what I'm saying is that symbolically you've got Prince and Sun, and then you've got this thing that I've connected with Prince William. Was this another thing equally like buying into an event with such a negative, horrible event in which the UN massacred loads of people, or 24 people? Hmm. It's, symbolism is ripe for it, and it gets even worse because basically... Um, the UN Colonel Marino suggested that ballistic tests can be done on the dead, and he says records from the Medicine Without Borders shows an influx of civilian casualties starting at 11 a.m. The symbol, the, the numbers are on the Wikipedia page, mm-hmm. so 11 a.m. brought in. And then you look into Porto Prince itself. Porto Prince celebrated its independence um, 200 years ago. Um, I don't know why it celebrated its independence from, because it didn't seem to get any better. <laughs> but right. the um, bicentennial monument that they erected in the independence of uh, Porto Prince just so happens to be a pyramid without a capstone and an Olympic flame at the top. Oh, nice. <laughs> uh, so I don't know what that's saying, but you've got Sun City with a prince and you've got a pyramid with an Olympic flame on the same day the Olympics 2012 bid was won. Hmm. My that God. doesn't happen. That doesn't happen. You know, it just doesn't happen. <laughs> hmm. Too much in there. So, obviously, getting into touchy areas and stuff here, because yeah. it's, uh, it's, it's pretty dark, really, when you think about it. Mm-hmm. I mean, um, moving into the Olympics 2008, um, I found this out recently. Um, the 2008 logo, have you seen the Beijing 2008 with the little guy and his wobbly legs? I've seen that, yes, yeah. yeah. It doesn't look very much like an athlete, but, um, you know, given it's the Olympics and stuff. But it just so happens that if you... Uh, decide to compartmentalize this logo into four different sections, um, it spells the word Zion. Hmm, what really the, now. What are the chances that two Olympic logos in like two, you know, in succession, both can easily spell the word Zion without any form of trickery? <laughs> you know what, I, I'm, I'm looking at that uh, as we speak here, I'm looking at your post about this, and that is incredible. Did, did you decipher that, or did you pick up that from somewhere else? Um, well, no, I just deciphered it the other day. Wow. Just, just having Look at it and just saw it, and I couldn't believe what I was looking at. That's really interesting. I'm going to have this uh, picture up on the website or link up this posting here of the blog so people can take a look at that. And that is really interesting. Wow. Obviously, you've got the slogan One World, One Dream for the hmm. Beijing 2008 Olympics. Doesn't that sound like a New World Order slogan to you? Indeed. <laughs> yeah. And oh so, anyhow, God. this goes on further because there's more symbolism to do with the Olympics 2008. Yeah. Um, basically, on the 11th of November 2007, so that's 11-11, <laughs> they uh, released um, five mascots, right, for the Beijing Olympics. Mm. And uh, these are weird little mascots, they've all got pyramid-style hats on. And uh, essentially, one, each of these mascots correlates to a colour ring of the Olympic logo. You know, we've got the uh, green, orange, red, black and blue rings. Mm. And each of the mascots correlate to one of these, they've all got their own colour. And essentially, what you're looking at here is... Um, if you take it back to the main calendar, and you've got the 20, 26,000 year cycle, and essentially the Mayans believed that within that cycle there was five separate cycles of so 5,100 uh, 
5,150 years. Mm -hmm. I can't remember off the top of my head. Yeah. Um, but basically, they stated that at the end of each world, um, 